Uh, my name is Tracy Webb. I'm the Associate Director for Collaborative Change in the Q community, and I'll be just taking us through the next session. As Libby mentioned, this workshop will be interactive, so there'll be lots of space for you to continue to reflect on your own, as you have just been doing, and with peers during the course of the, the time we have together. But responding to some of the priorities that a number of you highlighted in the pre-workshop survey, we thought it would be helpful to kick off by sharing some of what we've been thinking about in terms of learning capture um, and some of the rapid ways to generate um, and use that. So over the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'll share a little bit about what we mean by uh, capturing and making sense of learning, some principles for doing this well, and alongside we'll share some tools that you might find helpful. And we'll touch on some of the ways of working and leadership approaches um, that might be helpful to be aware of during this time. As I move through this session, I hope it sparks some thoughts or ideas for you. And again, I'd encourage you to jot notes or, or doodles or words to capture that. I'm not going to pause along the way for questions because there's just too many of us uh, for that to work well. However, as you've seen and as we've been using, we have the chat box. I'm aware that chat box during Zoom calls can be a bit marmite. Uh, some people love it as a way to share things that are occurring to them. Maybe um, a tool or approach that you've used and find helpful um, might come into your mind and you'll want to share that. And some people hate it as they just find it really distracting. So feel free to engage or not with the chat um, as works for you. We will be sharing um, links of um, a few tools that I'll mention through the chat box, but we'll also share those after the meeting as well. So you won't miss out if you're not paying attention to chat. So I'll just start briefly then by talking about what we mean by uh, learning capture and sense making. And I just wanted to firstly place this in the context of the learning healthcare system, a concept that some of you will be familiar with. The Institute of Medicine defines a learning healthcare system as one in which science, informatics, incentives and culture are aligned for continuous improvement and innovation. And Professor Friedman describes a cycle with processes that are common to all learning health systems. The blue side of this cycle, of course, includes a number of the technical steps. And the red side is very much an interdisciplinary and social challenge, incorporating um, a range of methods, behavioural science, communication, and so on. And you will no doubt all be involved in some version of this, carrying out a combination of the technical and the social to capture learning. So broadly speaking then, when we talk about learning capture and sense making, we're referring to the process for recording learner, learning live and in real time, and being able to use and interrogate this through a social process in order to move to action. The pressures on the health and care system at the moment mean that um, we're seeing unprecedented changes in how care is delivered. And with such change happening at such pace, it can be really hard to keep track of what, uh, what is changing and even more so to pay attention to the impact of those changes. But we know that in the future, we're going to have to make decisions about what service changes will stick around, which ones will actively undo, and which ones will hope to develop and improve from their currently altered states. We know we can't necessarily do all of the sense making now, but we must do as much of the capture as possible to give us the best chance of making sound decisions going forward. We just know, um, and you all know, and joining calls like this, that relying on our memories won't be, won't be good enough. So I'll now talk briefly about some principles to pay attention to when um, doing this work. And we've drawn out three of those. Um, and I'll briefly talk through what we mean by each of them and some ideas for how you might put them into practice. The first is about um, being timely. So after a change has been made or a service altered, it can be all too easy to make assumptions about how that change came about and perhaps who it is or isn't working for. And we can jump to the middle of this ladder to the point at which we see conclusions or assumptions. Many of you will be aware of um, Daniel Kahneman's work, um, his book Thinking Fast and Slow, and the fact that in times of pressure, we really need to be aware of the shortcuts that our brain needs and wants to take. A good learning process should be about making sure you move between the different stages that are highlighted here on this ladder of inference, rather than jumping straight to the middle. And in order to do that, the observation should happen in or as close as possible to real time and should draw on multiple sources to build pictures. 
over the last couple of weeks, we've come across some um, really well designed and simple templates that could help you to do this. I've highlighted two examples here, um, one from ELFS, East London Foundation Trust, and one from Collaborate for, for Social Change. And again, we'll share these links both in the chat and after the meeting. Another approach that can be really helpful is journaling, creating ways for people to observe what they're doing, seeing, experiencing and feeling. And when you bring together different people's insights, their experiences on the same situation, it can be really illuminating, a really great way to develop a deeper understanding of a situation. And as highlighted on this side, um, slide, an article in Nurse Researcher Journal identifies six strategies to promote participation in journaling, which I thought were really helpful. Um, and they're all interconnected, but thinking about coaching participants, limiting the period uh, which are asking people to journal, providing follow-up contact um, and support, ensuring that people feel safe in the way that they're doing this, and providing clear content expectations um, around what you hope people to, to capture. The second principle then is around supporting a range of people to participate. And that kind of builds on that last point about hearing different voices through, through journaling. Um, really making sure that you're supporting a range of people to participate in your work to capture learning. You only need to tell you that the more you can get diverse perspectives into the analysis, the better place you're going to be to make decisions. But if you can't reach all of the people that you want to, some stakeholders at the moment just won't be possible to reach um, well, notice that they're missing and hold yourself to account for, um, to involve them when you can. It's also really important to pay attention to psychological safety in the things that you're doing and saying. And um, IHI has some really great work on this that we've, we've drawn on, really encouraging people to model active listening. You might want to think about whether you hear yourself and others saying the types of things that are on this slide now. It's not easy um, to be in that mode when there's lots of um, burden on all of us, but it's really, really, really important. And finally, think about being purposeful. So again, just to return to that point about journaling, in the same way that it's no use asking people to record everything they experience, in your work, there'll be infinite number of changes going on. So try to be really clear about your goals, what's feasible, and empower those around you to do the same. It's gonna be better to focus on some key changes and set yourself up well to understand them deeply and respond in a kind of evidence-based well than it is to try and scratch the surface of every single change that you're seeing around you at the moment. And of course, consider how you'll use that information that has been collected um, and try not to underestimate the time that will be required to interrogate that well. Finally now then, a word or two on leadership and some ways of working during this time. This quote by Peter Senge talks quite eloquently about teams being the fundamental learning unit today. An individual might be a really very accomplished learner and in healthcare we have lots of those outstanding uh, individuals, but it takes real practice to learn how to do this effectively together as a team. A few things to pay attention to um, are around kind of recognizing the leaps of abstraction articulating that that goes unspoken, asking inquiring questions, so not interrogating people, but, but being really curious, and distinguishing between um, espoused theories, so what we say, and theories in action, so that that we do. Um, it's really hard to pay attention to those things, but if you can hold those in mind, you can really help your, your team learn together. Along the way, we'd encourage you to keep looking to some of the creative approaches out there um, to help with collaborative problem solving. And Stacey's already mentioned, and in fact, we've had a practice with um, one tool from Liberating Structure, uh, Structures, which is a, um, a great pack of, of methods. Um, and tools like the what, so what, now what can just inject some creativity and focus. Again, they need a little bit of um, amending to, to work online. Um, most of them we've certainly used in the past have been used in workshop styles, but we're practicing at the moment using them um, online. Potentially, if people are interested in, in this, we could um, consider running a session around how to use liberating structures um, online in the future. There'll be time for you to input on the things that you might find helpful. And finally, I just thought I'd end on a few snippets that might be, um, might be helpful. And you'll all be thinking about this and working your way through this um, every day. But I thought these, um, these snippets could be of use. 
So it's thinking about in the, the work that you're doing, the way that you're leading teams and others, framing the work to so setting expectations around failure and uncertainty at the moment. Not being afraid to emphasize purpose um, and really communicate why, why this work matters in the face of all of the other things that are going on. Why does it matter to capture this learning and how can we be using that well? Demonstrate through the things that you say and do that all voices are valued. This one here, be clear about standards, um, ensuring particularly behavioral standards are shared and understood and consistently applied. And at the moment, um, I, it's kind of jarred almost when I wrote it down. Uh, people are doing such amazing work. Um, but it made me think that at this time, it's really important. And things like kindness and forgiveness and knowing how to say sorry are, are kind of part of that. It's not about being uh, a model employee, but it's about um, not forgetting to talk about how we want to be with each other and, and kind of not walking past people who are not adhering to this. And finally, tap into the social nature of knowledge and think about how you can help facilitate the exchange of knowledge through existing um, groups and mechanisms. And definitely we are thinking a lot about that in Q. We know that knowledge flows through networks and communities of practice in a very social way. And we're thinking about how to really, um, really enable that. So I hope that has provided some food for thought for you, kind of whistle stop tour through some things that we've been thinking about. Um, and as I say, we'll share links and references following this call. And if you, if it sparked any thoughts for you of things that, that you've tried that um, maybe accord with this, um, we, can, um, we can share those as well if you pop those in the chat.